Hi there, guys! Today I'm presenting you my new Hit or Miss video series on this channel. Each week I will share with you my experience on art auction market, which paintings are worth bidding and which are the cases to avoid. This will be kind of live videos. You'll see me and you'll see my screen. So grab a cup of tea, coffee, a glass of wine, whatever you prefer, we're kicking off. Oh yeah, short disclaimer, video is not sponsored, all opinions are my own. I invite you to discussion, but all your actions are at your own risk. So this time I went to invaluable platform and look at the portrait that I found out there. Let me make it bigger for you. This is actually a very nice romantic portrait and uh, when I say romantic here I'm in the very first half of 19th century. Why so? Because there is a traditional technique of face and uh, paint application here. Um, another very interesting fact that I've noticed personally that I, when I examine a lot of paintings from the romantic air and the portrait it's this, look at this, reddish um, color on the back. Um, this is actually the new color, this tint that they um, introduced in the beginning of 19th century and a lot of paintings have this reddish backdrop on the back side in the very early 19th century. But um, have a look, here we, it's quite, it's quite an expensive one, look, it's like 9.5 thousand dollars, that's, that's a huge sum actually. And uh, it's said that it's 18th century portrait of Grand Tool sculptor. Well, I'm a little bit concerned here. Yes, the Grand Tour epoch, that was probably the end of 18th century, 1780s, 1790s, that was the high time. What is a Grand Tour? That was the time when um, uh, English aristocrats and European aristocrats, but mainly English, they decided that they, uh, they, they, they were thinking that they needed that gap year or something of traveling, going to Italy, learning history, educating themselves. And they took that time and went to travel to Italy, to Southern Europe, to see all the treasures of Europe that were there. That's when it came the tradition of portraits, the official portraits, that when they were posing like this, there were ruins of Rome on the back. Uh, and uh, that was again, uh, the age of enlightenment. So everything about education, science, high spirit, that, that were the things that were popular and were underlined in each and every painting. Here really we can see the face, just look at his eyes of the sculptor as you may assume. But um, yeah, it, it all actually corresponds to the age of enlightenment look and feel, but 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 the hair actually, <laughs> but the hair, hair here is um, what makes me think that it's the early 19th century rather than 18th century, or just well, it's it's clearly after um, a French Revolution because you, you you see there is no wig, no white wig that was popular there, and uh, the hair is quite loose. So let me check it in the connoisseur application. Yeah. I already downloaded, so um, I upload the image, I already put it in here. So and uh, yeah, let's check it out, what, what the connoisseur would say, that's the app that helps me tell it what is the epoch of the portrait. Yeah, but all in all, I like the painting, I don't like, um, I don't like, I don't particularly like the hand here, something controversial, but I don't like the face, I like the spirit, that's the most important part. Uh, we see that there is no uh, photo of the back side of the painting. Yeah, that's if you really want to spend $9.5 thousand dollars and you like the portrait, you should definitely ask for one. So let me have a look. Yeah, here it is. Here it comes. Romanticism style. Yeah, you see, here it is. It started just right after French Revolution, uh, but to my up to my experience, I see that this backdrop, reddish one, and uh, the hair and everything, that's probably the very early uh, 18 something, 
so I would say 1805, maybe even 1810, but uh, it could well be 1795. Anyways, here they're saying 18th century to make you feel that, uh, yeah, it's something like 1720, something, something. Uh, because when you say 18th century, you mean this rock copyright and all that stuff. Um, actually, in art history, they start to count uh, 19th century from the 1790, from the French Revolution. So, that's a question mark here. I don't like this 18th century here. I don't like the hand. But the portrait itself is very interesting. So, um, yeah, have a look at it if you want some. And, yeah, pay attention because the hair, hair is 19th century. So, let's go further. What's next? Here is another example. Have a look. The guy. I'll make it bigger for you again. Uh, when I just saw the portrait, what are you thinking? Uh, here it is, 18th century. That's uh, that's uh, the predecessor. Uh, that, that's actually uh, Louis XV epoch. Uh, how do I know? It's again uh, by uh, the dress and uh, by the hair. Just have a look at this wig. And that that wigs were popular in Louis XV uh, era. When I say Louis XV, here I mean the very um, like the middle of 18th century. That's probably maybe even the first half, not, not like the first half, maybe 1740s, 1730s, or some, well, maybe 1750s. Uh, let's check it out with connoisseur. I already did that, so make it easier for you. So have a look. Yeah, really it is. It's Louis XV. Here is an example, some brief information. Yeah, it is. Well, but uh, lo look again at the description. Seven 17th century? Bergamasca artist. That means that's the artist from Bergamo. It's Italian city on the north of Italy. But come on, guys. That style, that's the Rococo era style. And the birthplace of that style was the beginning of 18th century in France. Not Italy at all. Italy at that time was already like in decline, their art there. So they were, they were good at Renaissance and the Barocco, and, but all the rest, they were just like maybe coping and um, they had some certain lag in time. Well, but here they say like 17th century. Whoa, this guy is quite progressive because it looks like he was ahead of his time by 100 years. Absolutely impossible. Here we have the back side. Let's look closer at it. It's, it, it may say like, look, it's a new canvas. It's actually not new, That's, uh, it was relined, as they say. The stretchers are new. Um, yeah, I can say that the frame is quite old. It's not like quite old, it's 19th century frame. Maybe one day we'll make some talk about frames, but here is 19th century frame. Uh, again, not 17th century, <laughs> but in ways paintings to, uh, changed frames each and every time. So, um, yeah, well, it was aligned and some many paintings were aligned, even if it, if it could be 17th century painting, it would probably be aligned in 19th century and we, will s we would then see by the condition of um, the canvas tissue here. But no, it's just like very, very fresh alignment. I would say they did it uh, before sale like this. But again, no, it's 18th century. I'm not sure about Bergamasco. Is it from Bergamo, from Italy? I I'm not that specialist in this very epoch. Uh, but... Yeah, guys, really 18th century, nothing like that. And what's wrong with that? Maybe the painting itself is good, and why not buying it? It costs not that much, but still a considerable sum, not that much. But the question mark is, if they're saying 17th century, what else do they also hiding from you? Do they just don't know that it's not a 17th century, or they do it like on purpose? I don't know. So, yeah, it's up to decide. A funny case, yeah? They're like stating it's 17th century. Okay, let's go next. Uh, let's go right now to eBay. Yeah, just to change a little bit. So, yeah, here we are at eBay. I just filtered up. Oh, it's a French eBay. Why are going to French eBay? There are a lot more paintings out there. Here what I found. Actually, that's a very nice... I just wanted to share with you. I just saw it appearing. And uh, have a look. It's a very nice painting. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's as they call it Gibson girl style. Uh, actually, if you want to know about about styles, yeah, that's what I do. I uh, go to the connoisseur ap application. Here at Gibson girls, how do I know it? Yeah, I know it. Here's actually the example, um, a short video, and an exclamation. Yeah, what I did like about this painting, and you should probably have a look at it if you like the style, that's, that's the age of 19th and 20th century. And um, I like the, as the Italians call it, maestria. It's kind of a mastery in artist's hand, you know. Look how easily, how good are the brush strokes and um, how she... Actually, I guess the yeah the artist is she. It's Ernestine. How she uses the color, how how light and easy it is, and um, I really believe that's that's a nice thing to look like if you like this era Belle Epoque. It's the end of the Belle Epoque. Yes, yeah, see 1905. It's written down here, and I I love it. I'd really go for that. Uh, as we see the back side, um, have a look. Oh uh, yeah, the the canvas was real light, it was way bigger, you see, uh, the stretchers are new, but it doesn't matter. Actually, the canvas, yeah, uh, I don't think it's real lined. I guess it's just the canvas of uh, the very beginning of 20th century, so that's how they look like. So, I see, I like uh, the inscription. Ame, 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 um, uh, just, I don't know, <laughs> I started speaking French. I don't know what this word is, but chérie, à mes chérie, uh, Roustreau, Arbour. Um, uh, yes, that's the inscription to whom she painted that. And I guess, yeah, this is my topic of the week. <laughs> I'd really go for that. In terms of price, it's quite a huge price. Let's see what's the size. Yes, it's quite a big painting, quite an impressive one. But I really would consider maybe contacting uh, the buyer and trying to get some bargain or whatever and then I would uh, put it in a nice uh, frame and um, yeah guys so that's my topic artist Ernestine Rousteau d'Arbour uh, it's even said that it's auto portrait self portrait auto portrait auto portrait well yeah that's the topic let's go next uh, what we have today. That's actually an interesting thing I wanted to share with you. I personally don't like double portraits to buy and to collect and uh, I wouldn't say that I don't recommend, it's just my thing, but uh, look at this. They're saying it's um, uh, it's a pair portrait, the debut, beginning of 19th century. Uh, Ecole Allemande, that means uh, German school. Yes, and it's really an example of Biedermeier Erbach. Yeah, while we're looking at it, I will um, check it up in the app here. Yeah, to just um, maybe define like where exactly, when exactly it was painting. Because saying 19th century, beginning of 19th century, what does that mean? 1905 or something? Well, uh, I would say that that's a clear example of Biedermeier epoch. That's what they did in Germany. They synthesized neoclassicism with some romantic epoch. They tried to bring some more vivid colors and make it more happy, this ordinary life. The style uh, is quite distinctive here. And again, you see the color, this rose, the color of the... Yeah. But okay, uh, if we look at uh, the husband, we can see that. That's 19th century. Um, the beginning or 1830s um, is hard to say because uh, we see sideburns here. Uh, they were they started to be common in the Victorian era, say starting from 1830s, 1835. So I would assume that's the period. But looking at her, I'm like pretty sure that's Victorian era. And um, really, have a look. Don't know if you see it. I checked it up, and yeah. It says Victorian era from 1835, 1900. <laughs> um, I would then watch the video and read about it. Uh, why Victorian era? But that's that's about the hair. It's not only about the hair. It's about the dress. About everything. So you know, by checking it up, I just know that that's not the beginning of 
eight, 19th century, as they say. That's actually the pretty middle uh, of 19th century. And that's, and that's totally different when we talk about pricing, a value, potential value, uh, because, um, yeah, things changed rapidly in art history and uh, something that is older um, most of the times is more valuable here. But so yeah, there are a lot of examples like that. So if they don't give you the precise uh, date, like uh, they're not saying the year or the decade at least, or they're just saying 17th century, 18th century. If there's a portrait, try to check it up because uh, that's really very important. What's that? The beginning, the middle, the ending, that's very important. Well, let's go next. Another interesting thing that I found, it actually caught my eye when I saw this old lady. You would like say, what's interesting in that? But let me, ha let me show it to you. Um, several months ago, I've been uh, in Vienna, Austria, to the, uh, I might sound wrong, but, but it was Kunsthistorische Museum. Uh, in uh, Vienna when where they have the amazing collection of art and um, I, I saw the portrait of an old lady not this one uh, but looking quite similar I just I was thinking oh maybe that's the very hand and it really struck me back and I remember that recently I was searching for that artist his name is Balthasar Denner I'm not sure again how I'm pronouncing that German name. But have a look at these paintings. Uh, he was actually specializing on this old ladies. I guess this one is uh, from uh, the museum in Vienna. This one is in Hermitage. And um, yeah, look at them. And uh, back again, this portrait. Not that exactly, but yeah. Uh, here is just saying uh, that it's an old portrait of old woman. When I try to look closer at it, I see the technique of uh, realism paint application. That's the end of 19th century. I would say 1880s, 1890s. I guess some painter was just copying or starting or trying to make something in the spirit of Balthazar Denner. So I wouldn't say that it's ancient, old, ancient. I would say that that's the end of 19th century. Yeah, have a look. Um, how would you, you would may ask me how I see the difference. Um, let's have a look at this board here and uh, zoom in. Look, you see the difference in painting application. Oh no, like this, yeah. You see the brush strokes and uh, they're different. They're totally different. Here's more thin, more like authentic. This guy was uh, living on the edge of 17th, 18th century. But here's clearly the end of the 19th century. So yeah, funny thing, but very interesting one. That caught my attention. <laughs> okay, and now to like the sweet spots, another one. Just look at her, look at her. I just love the painting. Actually, it reminds me of, um, again, I'm not prepared here. I haven't done my research. I just, I just picked it up. I think that's my long list to make a further research. But I see here from the hairdo that that's Duchesse de Fontange style. It's Duchess of uh, Fontange uh, epoch. Uh, she was the mistress of uh, King Sun, Louis XIV, and that's the very end of uh, 17th century. Uh, as the hairdo is quite typical, uh, I think that's, that's the French school. Though the face was, um, could be even sometimes common to English painting, but no, here I think it's France and um, Look at the lace here, see, squeeze it, and uh, the painting itself is really beautiful. I like the face expression, that's what really matters. That's um, what helps me to define whether it's a fake, an imitation, or does it really have the spirit of the epoch of uh, the painting in question. What do we have here? We have quite an average, a very average frame of 19th century, but again, as I told you, paintings changed frame all the time, all the time. And we have the backside, it's very good. What do we see on the backside? That the canvas was relined, 
the frame is really from I guess 19th century the stretchers are good and uh, yeah it was it was treated well um, I like this painting but look uh, why I'm thinking that's a hidden gem look what they say it's 19th century port of a lady 19th century let me check it up once again I'll use the app I've already downloaded the pic here checking it up when they painted uh, in 19th century something to look older like 18th century they couldn't avoid this posh smile and uh, the ridiculous face expression that was not common here everything says that well it's a good portrait a portrait yes and by the way, by the way, there is also already ready. And again, it says like it's Fontanche. Um, it works actually on artificial intelligence. It's, it, it, it was trained by uh, looking on uh, already pre-assigned thousands of paintings of this or that epoch. So he really knows the, the connoisseur app. And uh, when I do really um, need to have this second opinion, I always use it because, you know... Uh, why not to, if you don't have anyone to ask for like immediately and for free <laughs> that would be nice i always use the app so again just look at her the painting what would i suggest doing i like the price by the way i'm sorry it's uh, just have a look it's like for free <laughs> it's like for free here what would i do i would reach out for the auction um, i would reach out for the auction and um, i would ask uh, for uh, additional photos um, close up of the face, close up of this very area. Have a look. I'm not sure. Yeah, have a look. This means that um, it was like smashed, probably a little bit. And uh, the crackler here says that that's the place where it was smashed, but that actually could not matter that much because that's not the face. But I would really want to look closely at her face and um, probably ask for condition report and see what restorations were made. But again, if, I, if I'd be in Dallas, <laughs> I'd go and check it up myself. It's June 9th, I don't have much time to go to Dallas. <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't have time to write them and ask for, pay, uh, for additional photos. You'd better do that too. Who knows, that may be a clever fake. Who knows? But uh, that's a very highly potential hidden gem. Not that I think that you would buy that for $600 and then would sell it for $600,000. No, I'm, say, no, I'm not saying that. But um, the, the potential value of this painting is way more than $600. Maybe three times, maybe five times, or maybe like 10 or, uh, or more times. That could be the case. That could be the case. The lace is everything. Looks nice yeah i want to check it up for retouching yes and uh, let's wrap it up let's wrap it up uh, with this <laughs> portrait just have a look at the price yeah that i know that's a lot but who knows maybe some of you guys do have the opportunity to go for it it will be selling at Sotheby's on june 29 and um, i've picked up this marvelous portrait not because it's a miss or a fake or whatever i don't i don't think so just because it's a thing that is really remarkable uh, you see there are a lot of problems on the surface here but uh, the face seems to be okay I definitely uh, go for Sotheby's and ask for conditional report but why this painting together today we're talking about 18th century the age of enlightenment the grand tour their ideals uh, science education not spiritualism that's already a romantic era but um, being a clever person, be, being an educated person, you see what, what is he doing? He is actually like studying something, or no, 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 or um, shell collector, yeah, he's studying something, he's studying his shells, he's collecting something, he's learning something. So, guys, if you do have 24,000 euros, I guess it would go, uh, you see, the estimate is. 30, 50, that's, that's the beginning of the bids. I guess it go for uh, 40 something. I know that uh, portraits by Duplessis, that of Benjamin Franklin, as far as I remember, was sold like over a million of dollars. 
So it could be a very nice investment if you're thinking about it. But just do ask for condition report. I think I think it's a even good state, but this 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 makes me worry. But maybe that's a chance to buy it for thirty thousand and then sell it for three three hundred thousand after some restoration. Good one is done. Ooh, that was a long video and I even cut it in half because there were so many more things I wanted to share with you. That's why I'm looking forward to our next meeting and you subscribe not to miss. Bye bye. Oh,